There he goes, the king of his prison this morning, and you're always on my mind. It's now 28 past nine, says he, having to dodge a camera to see the clock. Um, oh, we better do the introduction, otherwise you'll weep. It's time now for the latest news on what's hot and what's not in the world of technology with Matthew Dickerson on Tech Talk. Here on TCFM 88.9. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, I, I do like how you play those songs Thinking of me, you're always on my mind. Yeah. I'm sure that's what happens with yeah. you. I'm always on your mind, Richard. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. I'm sure I'm not. <laughs> um, you run into Andrew on the way in. I did have a chat to Andrew, and I think we've got um, Fred's Christmas present lined up. We just need to get him a new computer. So <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> the, what. From the brief analysis and the chat I had with Andrew there, I think that seems to be the problem. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, I do. Well, we've got a special one today. This is Tech Talk specially, folks, and. Uh, Matt has lined up 20 products that will be great for Christmas. There's one here that I want. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, number one, the acrylic periodic table of elements. Who wants that? I've got one. I've got one sitting on my desk. <laughs> it's brilliant. So for people who like their science or maybe yeah. in particular their chemistry, periodic table of elements, 118 elements on there. That's fine. Everyone remembers that from high school. But actually having a periodic table of elements that's got the real elements encased in acrylic in there, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, as you can imagine, not all 118 elements are there. So, and you encase hydrogen. Well, this is it. They, they've gone through, they've picked 85 of the elements they can yeah, encase oh, in there. Okay. So they don't have things like uranium and plutonium for obvious reasons. Gold is not in there because it's a bit expensive. But the, the 85 elements that they can commonly uh, yeah. um, put in there without having to have radioactive or expensive elements in there. I just think it's great. So I've got this little periodic table of elements. It's about probably, how big would it be? It'd be about probably six centimetres by 10 centimetres. Just sits there in an acrylic block about one and a half centimetres thick. And I think, it's, my wife thinks I'm crazy sitting there with, <laughs> on my desk with this periodic table of elements, but the elements in there, what a great idea. Imagine the guy sitting around at a pub one night going, we should market this. And they would talk about yeah. it and probably people will laugh at them, but people are buying them. I yeah. think they're great. All right. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, the robotic lawnmower. Now, are they any good? They are. I, I mean, I've seen them advertised. Are they any good? Yeah, they do are. Do they mow the lawn? What do they, they do? They mow the lawn. They're fantastic. And so, for people that have got a bit of lawn or a lot of lawn, these go from anywhere from, say, if you had 100 square metres up to 30,000 square metres. Great present for someone. And then, what you can do is you can do a little working bee with them. The biggest job you've got to do at the beginning is lay a piece of wire around the perimeter of the lawn. The actual uh, when the lawn undocks, it detects where that wire is so it doesn't run up into your rose bush and destroy your rose bush. And if there's things on the lawn, so if you had a tree in the middle of your lawn, that sort of thing, it just bumps into it and then backs off and keeps going. If you've got a pet you want to get rid of, it'll run over it. No, no, they're very good at detecting <laughs> pets. So they bump into a pet and they'll soon turn around. But my, my one of my dogs, or not my dog, my daughter's dog, actually runs around and chases it. So it has a bit of fun with it while it's out mowing. But it, it, Undocks, we have our schedule twice a week, undocks twice a week, mows the lawn, if it runs at a battery charge, plugs in, and charges up again, so absolutely brilliant. And you get back a bit of your weekend, you're not spending an hour mowing the lawn, you just forget about it, and your lawn always looks absolutely magnificent. Oh, true, oh, okay, okay. Does the dog chew the, uh, the lawn mower? No, it doesn't do the lawnmower, it doesn't chew the wire in there, it just runs around and chases it when it's out mowing. I was having a happy time, all right. Yeah, yeah. Now, this internet, internet connected clock that has an accurate time of plus or minus um, 200 milliseconds. This is perfect for you, Richard. I know you've got your clock on the wall. Well, I can't can see it at the moment because you've got a camera in the <laughs> way, but anyway, yeah. But it's important for you, anyone in radio, for example, to have accurate time. Some people are really pedantic about their time. They love their time being accurate. Now, with mobile phones and smart watches, we've got accurate times. But then we look at the microwave in our house and it's always out with daylight saving or it skips a few minutes every now and again. This internet connected clock is exactly as it suggests. It's a clock that's accurate to plus or minus 0.2 of a second or 200 milliseconds. It connects to the internet every 10 minutes. It connects to a network or a network time server using network time protocol. And basically it will work out how far away you are from the network time server to allow for that small differentiation in time to transmit the oh. signal to your clock and then basically set that clock to incredibly accurate time. So you don't have to worry about time again changes for daylight saving automatically, it's always dead accurate. Oh, okay. Well, um, this poor thing that we've got on our panel, um, which is saying 9.31 and 50 seconds, and the other one is showing exactly 9.50, uh, 9.31 and a bit, <laughs> anyway, uh, they vary. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Um, mate, um, 
a voice activated wheelie bin. Now, why would anybody want one of those for Christmas? <laughs> what does it really say? Open the lid and open the lid. Open, it's an American one, so they use the word can rather than bin, yeah. but they say, you just walk up to it, you say open can, so you've got your, your arm full of rubbish, you just cleaned up after Christmas dinner, open can, the lid comes up automatically for you, you drop the rubbish in, and then it closes for you automatically. And even better, one of the things that's always annoying is you take the bin, bin liner out, you go and drop it in the bin outside, and then, oh, where's that other bin liner? It's got a dispenser for bin liner, so it pops out a new bin liner for you to put into the bin for you. So it, it is absolutely just a, a, an example of a decadent society we live in where you need to be able to voice activate your garbage can, but it's there, it's a present for someone. Oh, someone right. that has everything, I would suggest. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> now, here's the one that re I really want. It's the mini photo printer. I want one of these. Are they expensive? No, they're not too bad. Uh, I've got a couple of my kids have got these already. They've basically got a little, usually a two by three inch or sometimes a slightly larger inch print. You connect your smartphone to it, obviously via Bluetooth, so it's basically connected and done. And then you scroll through all your photos. And in the old days, you might have had a Polaroid or you'd get your, your film printed and you'd see how good your photos were. But now, you can scroll through all your photos on your smartphone. You're like, sure, I might look at that photo. I'll print that one out. So you send it to your printer. It prints in a couple of minutes. There it is. And most of the ones that they have, most of the, the styles of prints, have a sticky back. So you peel off the back and you can stick it in on, your on your car or in your album or on your door of your bedroom, whatever. So kids love them. I know, again, one of my daughters got photos all stuck over her bedroom wall. So it's almost a bit of retro. You expect kids to look at all their photos on their phone now, but it's a bit of retro where you can actually stick some photos up. Oh, that's what I want. I really want one of those. Uh, look, we're going to come back with more in just a minute because uh, there's a, a multitude of uh, wonderful tech gifts here, but the mini photo printer is the one that um, I want. Um, we might, at uh, nearly 25 to 10, do a little song. We'll come back with some more in a moment. Matt. Sounds good. Uh, DCFM 88.9 with the Beatles and with love from me to you. Well, Matthew's spreading the love this morning with his tech talk and the Christmas presents that you need to buy for someone. And uh, they're coming more and more bizarre as we go on. Um, the audio shower head. So Richard, I cannot sing to save my life. So the only place that I sing is in the shower. But sometimes you can't quite remember the words or the tune might have escaped you. Yes. Then what you need is music in the shower. Obviously, for in, in the old days, if you took your phone in there, the phone would be destroyed. Phones now are typically waterproof. But the, the speakers on the phone are a bit small. So this latest one is an actual clip-on speaker that you clip onto your shower head. Yep. It's connected via Bluetooth to your phone, so your phone needs to be, say, maybe 10 metres, within a range of 10 metres or so, and you can blast that tune. Obviously, it's completely waterproof. Sit there, blast out your tune, sing as loud as you like. No one else can hear you, drowning out those beautiful sounds that you're putting out, or terrible sounds, whatever they might be, but listening to music in the shower. I love until, it. until your wife comes in and tells you to shut up. <laughs> well, hopefully there's enough noise from the, the real speakers <laughs> that you know, can't hear your voice being terrible. Well, uh, now, the Golf Range Finder. Um, what's all that about? Well, we've got a friend of ours, definitely, that plays a bit of golf. This might be a perfect present for him. The, the, the president of this organisation, yes. Exactly right. And uh, the breakfast announcer of this organisation will be loving this one. Yeah, that's right. So one of the, the tricks in, in golf is, apart from being able to hit the ball and being consistent with how far you hit the ball, is knowing how far you've got to hit the ball. Now, you've got markers on the ground, of yes. course, but you might be off to the side a bit. You're not sure how far the pin set back. So being able to know accurately how far away the hole is, is critical in golf. Now, professionals have got a caddy there. That's their job. Make sure you know yeah. 167 metres to the pin. But for most of us amateurs out there, it's a bit rough. So you, you take the golf rangefinder with you. You look through it. You look at the flag. And it's obviously using some pretty cool little laser technology that will actually work at exactly how far the pin is. So the pin set back or set forward. You look through the range finder. You can go, great, I'm 122 metres exactly. I know to pull out my sandwich for that. Three quarters sandwich there. I'm wondering, oh, look at that fantastic shot, guys. Yeah. Not sure the legality and competition of these, but <laughs> uh, but just for amateur golfers out there to improve their game, great yeah. idea. Yeah, well, OK. Uh, there might be a rule in the future. Why do I need a smart water bottle? You probably don't, but, but <laughs> there's a great line from the Big Bang Theory, one of my favourite TV shows, that says, everything goes better with Bluetooth. And this is the example here. This is a, a water bottle that's connected to your smartphone with Bluetooth. And really, it's a way of keeping your hydration up by reminding you on a regular basis that you haven't had a drink, you need to drink a certain amount. So it knows how much water is in the water bottle. It knows whether it's been touched and, uh, or not. It doesn't know whether you've been the one that's actually had a drink from it, but uh. it's assuming it's the one person. So it checks the volume on the water bottle, sees how far you've gone. 
checks how often you have a drink, and it gives you reminders on your smartphone. So a notification will come up, hey, Richard, time to have a drink in your water bottle. You drink some, maybe through the day, hey, Richard, you've only drunk 200 mils, you should have drunk 300 mils by now. So it's just a way of keeping your hydration up through the day. Again, probably don't need it, but just one of those little things. Well, Again, I try to pick presents for people that have got everything and people that love their technology. Well, okay, I mean, and I, I'm not blaming you for any of this. I think it's wonderful. I mean, we, we can move right along to the Bluetooth toothbrush. Oh, again, Bluetooth, what can you go about? <laughs> and, and this is one of the ones, we actually talked about this one during yes, the I know. Year, but yeah. I, I still like the idea of it as a Christmas present. And again, you think, well, why would you want a Bluetooth-enabled toothbrush? Well, it does a couple of things. First of all, it tells you how long you should brush your teeth for. Two minutes is kind of the minimum you should brush mm. your teeth for. Most people do it for 30 seconds or so. So having the length of time is important, but also getting into every part of your mouth across all of your teeth. So this actually monitors where you're going on your teeth, and it gives you a little image, a little diagram, not of your mouth, but a, a cartoon-type diagram on your smartphone to show you where you haven't actually brushed yet. So you might be brushing away there. You might be right-handed, so you tend to brush the left side of your mouth more than your right side of your mouth because it naturally goes across to your left side. So yeah. it will show you on the little image that you need to go across to the right side of your mouth. You haven't done the inside of your teeth. You haven't done your molars, whatever it might be. So you get an image there to make sure you brush all of your teeth and you make sure you brush it for long enough. This one, though, actually, my, my daughter was looking through these to see what she could get for me because I, I said, look, I've got most of these, but I haven't got all of them. She found that one. Oh, I might get that one for you, Dad. But she looked at the price of this one. It was a bit expensive. It was a couple hundred bucks. So she soon ruled that off for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not worth 200 bucks, Dad. <laughs> right. no. yeah. You're worth 50 at most. <laughs> yeah, indeed. All right, the last one, and I can't believe this, light sabre chopsticks. Who in the hell wants to eat with light but chopsticks going wall, 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 wall. <laughs> Only people who love their Star Wars and yeah. things that if you love your Star Wars, you, can get, you can't get enough Star Wars things. So if you like to use chopsticks every now and again, you know, maybe sort of get some different foods and try some different methods of eating and you get the chopsticks out. Well, if you love your Star Wars, having lightsaber chopsticks is absolutely essential. So they look like <laughs> the lightsaber. They've got the end on them like a lightsaber. Yeah. They glow. Obviously, they don't cut through things like a laser, so they're not quite as good as a lightsaber. But basically, they sit there and glow. They can be thrown in a dishwasher so they can be washed up nice and easily. Uh, just a great little Star Wars gimmick. So just a nice cheap present to finish off. Would be. And uh, I can see kids using those. And... Um, um, Obviously, having fights across the table, be rice going everywhere. Probably right. <laughs> Food going everywhere. So we take no responsibility for any of those actions that happen after this, Richard. In, indeed, we do. But I do want a mini photo printer, and I've got to ask you where, you, where we get one after, uh, or I get one after we uh, go off the air, I suppose. Sure thing. Um, There's a subtle hint to all your listeners. So all those listeners that are buying presents for you. Me, uh, uh, Richard wants a mini photo printer. A mini photo printer, yeah. And they're universal. They work with any smartphone, so it doesn't matter what type of smartphone people have got. They're connected via Bluetooth, so any modern smartphone will connect to them, and there's different size prints you can get out of them. And they're available in Dubbo? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just any any retail, any electronic retailer, you can go in there. There'd be a range of different brands, a range of different size prints on there. I think they're fairly cheap because the main way they make the money is actually out of the material yeah. that they use to print on. Yeah, like a printer. Like yeah, a printer, indeed. that's right. Yeah. Matt, good talking with you. Will we get to see you next week? Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Okay, all we'll right. We'll, a, we'll, a Merry Christmas to everyone next week. So we'll, we'll do all that Merry Christmas stuff next week. I just thought we'd get in this gift guide early with enough time for people to get in, find these presents and have it enough time to order them in if they needed to before Christmas. Indeed. Great idea. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Richard. Matt Dickerson. And at 17 to 10, this is DCFM 88.9. Oh, with a... Well, what was it? The... Oh, the opening, the opening whirly bin. Um, that has got to be the most indulgent present I think anybody could ever give anybody. Um, yeah, open can. Oh.